Um, <laughs> if uh, I could get the rest of our clay group to come on up and join me on the stage. Uh, we are a small group this year. Um, the trip booked up very quick. There were limited spaces available. Um, it was in a new location. We we're down, uh, down a little bit further south from Clay County where we've previously done most of the work that we've done down there. Um, and I had an opportunity to uh, kind of be the media, the eyes and ears of, of everything going on. And uh, I never really realized the full scope of everything that goes on in that mission week down there until I had the opportunity to be on every work site every week. So I put this video together. I was up till 3 in the morning making sure that it was all buttoned up. Um, and I hope that it kind of conveys what the entire mission week is. I know a lot of our video, the videos we've done in the past have been 80% work projects and like 15 or 20% the, like the VBS and the sports camp they run down there. But in reality, it's probably flipped because there's so many more people and so many kids down there that, you know, most of them have never heard about Jesus. So um, I, uh, I was able to spend a lot more time at the sports camp this year. Uh, Caitlin was along with me for the whole time, so I hope uh, hope the video does a quick job of a good job of uh, showing you the whole major scope of this entire project. Yeah, we can sit down.
Okay. He's, he's pulling double duty back there, triple duty right now. So. Um, anyway, uh, so that was kind of the trip in a, a nutshell. Um, I'm sorry it was 12 minutes long. I condensed it as far as I could, but I had literally hours of video to sift through. So I did what I could. Um, so I just wanted to start with my experience this past week. And it was a little bit different from previous trips. This is the fourth time we've gone down to serve with Vision. And it was an, every time it's kind of the same thing, but it's entirely different. Um, a whole different feeling, a whole different atmosphere. Um, so I, I'm going to preface this with uh, how my trip started to how it ended. Um, so I had worked night shift on Saturday night, 12 hours, went home, took a shower, came to church, uh, attended the service, turned around, went home, packed our camper, loaded our dogs in our camper because they were staying with us for the week, um, and then pulled our 8,000 pound camper three hours, four hours to Clendon in West Virginia. Uh, we got where we were going. I was incredibly tired. I was frustrated. Um, the place where we were supposed to park, we weren't allowed to plug in our camper to. We found out once we got there. I was like, oh no, it's 95 degrees outside and we've got dogs that are gonna be living in the camper all week. Um, but, and, and you know, I, I'm just sitting there like irritated and frustrated. I'm like, unbelievable, we came down here with no plan. Now there's no, like, you know, the plan was what it was. And now we're down here and who knows what's gonna happen. And you know, within 10 minutes, everything, yeah, yeah, the lack of sleep had nothing to do with it. Uh, the, uh, but within a couple minutes, it was resolved, just like that. We were down the block, two blocks. Uh, we were allowed to park at the uh, Baptist Church in Clendon in there. Uh, they were gracious enough to let us hook our camper right in. We had the air conditioning running. Everything was perfect. Um, everything just took care of itself. It was, uh, it was great to see uh, great people down there at the church. They, gave us full use of their facilities. We had internet access, because uh, I, I was putting together uh, nightly recap videos of all the different work sites in the VBS camp, so whenever the group reconvened, everyone could see what everyone else is doing through the week. Um, so that was a really cool, cool thing. But anyway, I was like so irritated and frustrated. Everybody left Sunday night. I had been up for 30 hours, so I, I just went to bed in the camper Everybody else went down to the, the island, which you'll probably hear more about eventually. But uh, everyone else went down to the island for the, the worship and, and uh, fellowship time. And I was laying in bed. It's 90 degrees because the camper hadn't cooled down. I was like, this is a bad idea. We shouldn't have done this this year. We don't have time. There's too much going on in our personal lives. I had to take vacation time for this. And it's going to be miserable. I was, I was irritable. <laughs> um, and I woke up the next morning. And still in kind of that brain fog, st still kind of irri irritable. We went to breakfast at uh, Blanche's, is that the name of the place? Blanches. Yeah. Uh, so we, our, our group and some of the guys from New Jersey and a couple of the other guys from Pittsburgh, they, uh, we all were in a, like a northern encampment, which was a little bit different from where everybody else was because their work site was so far away from everybody else's. But we were having breakfast there um, at Blanche's restaurant had breakfast, it was, it was a good breakfast, and uh, I'm still sitting there, still kind of fogged out, uh, kind of irritated about the whole thing. Um, and the, the pastor that these guys were gonna do the work for stood up. I didn't realize he was even there, but he had come down for breakfast and the, to guide the guys back into the place where we were gonna be, they were gonna be doing the work. And uh, he stood up and he, said, he just said, thank you guys for, for coming down to do this. He said, I've been in the, uh, I've been in um, ministry for 51 years, I think he said. And uh, he said, we've lived in a parsonage or parsonages our entire career, never thought out what happens at this point. You know, he was in his mid seventies. Um, and it just struck me like at that time, because he, he had nowhere to turn. He said his brother gave him a house, but it was terribly dilapidated. If you saw that first one, the, the, where they put the roof in, the subfloor was rotten. Uh, and just miraculously, out of the blue, he gets put in touch with Jesse Boggs and Vision, and an army of volunteers descends out of the sky to put a new roof, new subfloor, new flooring in. 
And, you know, it just proves that, like, God is looking out for his people. You know, this guy put 50-plus years into the ministry, trusted God, you know, where he was going to go from when it was over, and he thought he was in trouble, and, you know, here comes help. It's just incredible to see. And we saw stories like that all weekend. Um, uh, when when he, he started speaking, I went from that, that fog brain, you know, um, it was like, if you've ever had a moment of clarity where everything just snaps into focus, that's what it, like, I've never had one like that in my life sitting there is when he started talking. It was like, here I am complaining about my situation, and I didn't get enough sleep, and our camper wasn't level, or whatever, and, you know, put myself in the back seat. It's not about me. It's, it, it's about serving others this week, and, like, from that point on, it was, it was game on. And when he prayed for our group right after that, um, I will say I'm not, uh, I don't know how to put it, but um, I've never felt like the presence of God in a room like when he started praying right there in the middle of that restaurant. Uh, he prayed for just thanking God for, for the, that group to descend. And, I mean, if Jesus had been sitting in the chair next to me, it wouldn't have felt any more real than it did. It was, it was a really cool moment. Um, and from that point on, it was like 100% mood flip for the rest of the week. It was, uh, it was just an awesome experience. And um, I don't wanna, wanna drag this out too long, so I'll, I'll skip ahead. But uh, we had the opportunity, myself and Caitlin, like I said earlier, to be kind of the eyes and ears for the entire uh, trip, which is a little bit of a shift change for us from years previous where we'd just been on one work site and you know, we met one one person or one family and we worked there the whole time, we were able to see the entire scope of the operation that, that Jesse and, and Vision Appalachia puts on. And it is nothing short of amazing, uh, miraculous, how everything, all these multiple, multiple work sites with people who have never met, who all just converge on Sunday night and boom, they're out there on the sites Monday, the material shows up and Everything just happens. It's incredible. Uh, it's an awesome experience. Um, we met s multiple great people. Um, the opportunity that they, that they had to minister to those people on those work sites was awesome. The uh, sports camp that they put on, um, kudos to the Watsy guys for a part of the sports camp last year. Boy, is that, it, it's like herding cats. There's 150 kids and they're just running around. Um, but but they're so into the Bible time, and for a lot of them, you can tell they come from not great backgrounds. You know, they show up, their clothes are dirty, their shoes are ripped, you know, torn. They, they don't live, a lot of them don't live, you know, a life of luxury. And, you know, you figure this might be the first, maybe the only chance they'll have to hear about Jesus. And um, so just to be able to sit in the back and watch uh, TK do his, uh, his Bible presentation was really cool to see. Um, it was a, a humbling experience the entire week, completely unlike any other year, but um, a, a great one nonetheless. Um, and I, I know I've stood up here for three different reports, I'm going to do it a fourth time, and say if you've never gone on this trip, you need to find a way to get, get on this trip. Take vacation time, uh, set it aside months in advance, do what you've got to do, at least one time you've, you've got to make that trip down to West Virginia. You've got to meet these people that come in. It's a, some of the same group every year and a whole bunch of new people interjected every year from different churches from all across the country. And it, it's just amazing to see what like-minded like people can do when they come together. It's like you're instantly friends with people that you've never met before. I, I'm a pretty introverted person, um, but like I could just strike up a conversation with anyone down there because you know you've got something so in common with them, um, and that's the the knowing and believing in Christ, and that's just such a powerful thing. When you start off with that, you're just like I said, fast friends with everybody on every different work site. You know, we went to sites where we knew people. We went to sites where we never met anybody, and it was like we were old friends with everybody. You know, just socializing and fellowshipping with them. So um, I think I've taken up enough time, so I will pass it along to whichever of you would like to go next. But uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you to the missions team. Thank you to the, the pastries bar that has been going on for months raising money 
everyone who put any amount of time into the yard sale, you know, that raised money for missions. Um, we couldn't do it without you guys. It's an awesome experience. We thank you for sending us and supporting us. And uh, we, it is our hope and prayer that, you will, that we as a church body will continue to support Vision and the, uh, the wonderful work they do down in West Virginia moving forward. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Willie, for that great job putting the video together. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, the pictures of me were watching paint dry and being awarded the biggest liar. <laughs> Um, I, I'm so happy to have had this opportunity again to, um, and a privilege to serve on this missions trip down in the most poverty stricken parts of West Virginia. Um, I do want to thank the missions team also for raising funds so that we could go. And Brenda, I know she's not here, she's with her mom today, but um, she has been so faithful and like throughout the week she would send me text messages just reminding me that she was thinking about us and praying for us. Um, so this year, I was actually on a team that worked in the little town of Clendenin, and I do not do that word justice at all. You have to hear the people from West Virginia say it. They put a sweet little twang to it. They take out all the vowels, and it's like, I, I can't even say it like they do. It's like Clendenin. I, I don't know. It's, you have to hear someone from West Virginia say that. Um, so anyways... The job that I was on, we built 10 picnic tables, 10 trash receptacles, painted curbs, um, sealed a stage uh, and ramps in the center of town and changed a hand railing on uh, the town hall steps. People prior said, won't the government pay for something like that? Provide funds for picnic tables and trash receptacles? Isn't it the grounds crew's job to paint those curbs? You know what, the answer to that might be yes, but if it was done through the government or the grounds crew, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus in that situation, to show these people the love and kindness of God. I'm usually on a home construction site where I do some physical work, but I spend most of my time building, <laughs> building relationships with the homeowner. My first thought this year was, I'm not going to have the opportunity to connect with anyone. Funny how when we create a problem, God solves it. He has a solution. The very first person that I came in contact with was a grounds crew guy named David. David was very down on himself, very negative, um, and I instantly thought, David is the reason that I'm here this week. Um, so two teammates and I were running around doing some errands and we stopped and uh, took him a sandwich and we started talking to him. And I told him how I had noticed that he was so down on himself. And I told him, I said, you know, Jesus loves you. And he said, I believe differently than other people do. And I said, well, how do you believe? He said, I don't believe you have to go to church. He said, I cuss really bad. He said, and I don't think it's right to go to church and then come back out and just continue cussing the way, you know, the way that I do. And um, I didn't have the chance to tell him. Well, I did tell him. I said, you know, we are all sinners. We're all sinners. I didn't have the chance to tell him that that's why Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross to cover those sins. Um, and when we receive Jesus as our Savior, we have a desire to change that behavior, to transform. He starts transforming our lives. I have a plan to get back in contact with David and have more discussions with him. Um, when he was going home from work on the last day that we were there, he stopped and um, talked to me. And he, so Clendenin, back in 2016, the entire community was in a flood. His trailer was nine feet underwater. And he, um, you know, he was showing me pictures of the sludge and the mud that consumed all of his earthly possessions. Um, and again, I hope to see him someday to tell him about, you know, the heavenly reward. Um, so then God placed another man in my path. I was painting curbs in front of Dollar General and an employee named Billy was out there on his break. And one of the customers walked up past him and said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm tired, I'm cranky, I'm miserable. And I was like, 
ah, I need to go talk to him. <laughs> so um, I thought I need to share a Bible verse with him. So I went into the store and I found him and I told him I couldn't help but overhear his conversation um, when he was outside. I said, are you okay? And he said, yep, I'm just tired, I'm cranky, I'm miserable. And so I shared Matthew 12, Matthew 11, 28 with him, and I told him that Jesus says in the Bible, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I asked him how I could pray for him, and he said, just pray about everything. So if you guys think about it, please pray for David and Billy, that they would come to know Jesus so that they can have true joy and peace. So people from the community were actually also a blessing to us. One girl expressed her gratitude. I mean, we're painting curbs, no big deal. One girl expressed her gratitude. Thank you so much for coming and working to help make our community look better. Another lady was so thankful that we put the railings on town hall. She said, I have lived here for five years and those things have need needed replaced, you know, and she was just so thankful that we went, um, you know, and, and did that. Uh, there was a lady that brought us, you know, we we're working in 90 some degree weather and uh, there was a lady who brought us uh, cold bottles of water when we were sealing the, the stage up there. And uh, I asked her how I could pray for her. And she, um, her name's Teresa, but she, um, she was so excited to tell us how God had worked in her life and how he had um, healed her. She was two years cancer free. So um, God also placed me in a position, like we think we're always going to meet the needs of the people there in West Virginia. Um, but there were actually two people on the team that I was working on. And one was um, a very anxious, high-strung lady and um, not real easy to be around or to work with, but I feel like God used me in her life. And then there was a teenager who was um, very withdrawn and things like that, and, and God put me in that position where I was able to be an encouragement to them as well. Um, so I am so encouraged by the people who come to help. There are young people who are such hard workers and are so on fire for the Lord. And then there are older people in their 70s and 80s who come and they work hard. Um, so I'm thankful, really, that Jesse has this vision for West Virginia. Uh, and he always follows the motto of leave the place better than when you came. And I don't know if you guys really noticed, and Willie had talked about the island and um, that was a, it, a church owns the island. The youth meets there like every Wednesday, but that was where a lot of our people stayed. That's where we had dinner together and worship together every night. Um, some people were finished with their jobs, and um, Jesse went out and got paint, and he had, he had those people that were finished with the jobs paint all the, the block buildings there on the island. It wasn't part of our work, you know, scope, but, you know, he, he does things. He, he has a vision to make things definitely better than when they came. I know that a lot of seeds were planted on this trip, and I am so thankful um, that we were able to go. And I hope more people just get in on this and, and um, have this experience. You will truly be blessed. So I didn't, you know, print anything out or write anything down or anything like that. So this is going to be short and sweet. So, yeah. Like Willie said, we were kind of the ones that got to go around and see each of the individual projects, which was really neat to get to meet the different people while he was, you know, flying the drone around and having having fun with that. I actually went in and got to meet each of the homeowners and kind of talk to them and and just get, get to know the people a little bit better, more so than the actual physical work this time. Um, so I had more of my mom's job than the job that I usually do, which was completely, you know, out of my comfort zone. But... It worked out and got to meet a lot of good people and built some relationships with them. So, hope to go back next year. Told you. Short and sweet. Jeez. Jeez. That was beyond short. <laughs> I just needed to save time for you, that's all. Well, we've been doing this for a lot of years, at least 10, 11 years, can't remember. Uh, this year was a little different for me because I actually am helping Vision somewhat and uh, I did get the pleasure we went down and we looked at all the different job opportunities and so on and chose what we were going to do and a couple of these jobs we went into this house you saw the house with the trailer that they were painting that lady was not very friendly when we were there 
she was not very friendly when we were there measuring things out, seeing what needed done, and it was really a sad situation. She's a fairly large lady, and her floors were completely rotted in that trailer. She had little planks about that wide that she had laid across the, the floor, and she had a little piece of carpet over it, and that's the only place she could walk. And she walked all through that trailer like that. And then we looked outside, the porch was falling off, this was happening, the roof was leaking, it was just, this place was in bad shape. And I'm thinking, there's no way we're going to get all this done in three days. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not going to happen, three or four days. And uh, surprisingly, they finished up, you know, a day early. It's, it's amazing when they, people do come together. A couple of the jobs we went and looked at were really large jobs. The house, the house with the pastor, that was a massive job. We tore all those floors completely out of that, that place and replaced everything. Uh, a lot of work, but it's so fun working with people. They just, boom, and Willie's right. They just come together, and it's happened. It just happens. Everything got finished. Everything got finished pretty much a day early. Nor normally, you know, we're, some people were sticking around till Friday mornings and, you know, finishing up and then going home. And we were done. We were done Wednesday for the most part. We went back, found more things to do. But we were pretty much all done on Wednesday. And, um... Some of these jobs, like the one you saw the job where they put the floor in the entire house. It looks like a nice house, and it is a fairly nice house. But this young man made some really bad life choices through his, his younger years, and he wound up destroying his kidneys. To, and to his point, he's, he's so bad now, he's bedridden. And he, how old is he? Did you meet him? He's young, maybe in his late 20s. So he's bedridden. It's pretty sad, but he's a very nice, very nice young man. And it was a pleasure doing that. We put the ramp on his mother's house, which is next door, so they can get him in and out of there as well. So, I mean, a little bit of background behind that, behind that, behind that job. Um, the picnic, picnic was fantastic. We served food for how long? Seemed like a couple hours, and it was a solid line of people it never stopped in clay you'd get a rush then you get a little break get a rush this never stopped it was i mean we went through more hamburgers and hot dogs than i can imagine it was a lot we ran out of half the stuff which is unusual but it was a blessing the little the little group that sang they were a blessing how old is that girl ten one and ten and twelve years old and boy can they play it, that was very enjoyable just it's just a great trip and there's a place for everybody. You can see there's a place for anybody and everybody. If you can't do construction, there's other things. There's kitchen, there's, there, there's numerous things. I'd like to see a lot of people next year going down with us. Um, what? Oh, you got more to say. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> um, during the... Uh, the, the sports camp and the VBS and so on, I was told that there were 10 kids that came forward and accepted Christ. That's what, there were, that's what I was oh, There were five more that stated, I think I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. So the total 15, um, which is very nice. Uh, trying to think of what else. The liar's dice, uh, that did not get explained. She was queen liar last year. Queen liar this year. That apple don't fall far from the tree, right there. Um, it's a great time. It is a lot of hard work. We do work very hard when we're there. Very tired. Not everybody, but most of us. Um, <laughs> she said it. I just repeating it. <laughs> um, but it, but it, it's it's still a blessing to get together. This is like an extended family for us. I mean, we've been doing this for so long with. The same people, we look forward to seeing each other. It's like getting together for a family reunion. So you have that on top of that as well. It's very enjoyable. You got anything else? No, yes, you covered it. You covered it. Covered it. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, if you want to see the day-by-day -day videos, he has four of them, right? Yeah, four. one for every day. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> worth watching because it kind of does give you a little more insight on, on progressions, and, and it's nice. 
So do uh, you want to tell them where to find that? If you just look for uh, Fish in Appalachia 2024 on YouTube, you can find my channel on there. They're all, they're all there. But um, just searching for that on YouTube should, should get you there. It's worth a watch. Then they're a little short, four or five minutes. Yeah, they're, they're five minutes each for each day. So you can see what, what our team was able to see as it was happening. So. That's it.